and welcome to Lifestyles of the Strange and Exotic. <coughs> Star Trek Classic Book Review, The Technical Manuals, and the fact that I have 30 minutes left on my camera. <laughs> so, <laughs> maybe we'll make this in time. Now, in this Phase 2 series, I shall reviewing sort of a, kind of an overlooked type of book as far as not necessarily Star Trek is concerned, but as far as movies in general's, <laughs> print my tongue. As the you know concept of movies, how do I start that in English? This is a kind of an interesting book, but it's kind of overlooked because usually when you think of the effects in movies, it's like all CG and all that crap, and it's like okay, you hit a button on a computer, what do you do? Not so so much in Star Trek, especially motion picture and before that. So this is the special effects of Trek. And this was a super buy mm, from some store. I have no idea where it came from. Uh, oh. I think this was from Media Play. God, that was an awesome place. <sighs> this was a holy ground for any nerd. You had movies, you had music, you had, um, I think you get software, they had books, they had toys, collector's cards. I mean, if you were a nerd, this was Nirvana, okay? <laughs> now, of course, they went out of business and really sucked. <laughs> and the last one I knew was in New York, but that was quite a few years ago when Ames was still in business, which is no longer there. <laughs> so, so this was 10 bucks at Media Play many a year ago. And it was originally fourteen ninety five, but then... It was a super buy, so it might have been even more off of that. <laughs> so, he goes, an in-depth look at the special effects magic behind the 26 years of Star Trek productions. So this was from 1995, because the 25th anniversary was 1994. So you can see how old this is. Special effects have always been an important facet of Star Trek phenomenon. This book explores how the effects have been achieved from the Emmy award-winning episode, The Tholian Web, of the original series, through the spectacular effects of the movies and the challenge of creating new effects week after week for Star Trek Next Gen. This lovely account describes the fascinating work that goes behind the scenes. James Van Heist, the author of Trek The Next Generation, the 25th anniversary tribute book, which I don't believe I possess, but I do have stuff from James Van Heist. It looks like they misspelled his name here because it doesn't look like that. I don't know. Oh, the Trek Root book, which I do own and many others about popular entertainment that lives in Palm Springs, California. What in the heck is the Star Trek crew book? Maybe I'll review that one. I don't know, but that's one I own. <laughs> and this is is nifty. This you could probably get in a digital format because it's just mostly, you know, there's nothing graphically special about it. There are a few bits and pieces like, you know, the photo gallery. But it's still kind of cool. <clears throat> And it just goes into, let's see, by the way of an introduction, the age of special effects. A special effect is any technique that creates the illusion of reality. Since no one can go out into outer space and film the adventures of 23rd century heroes, they have to fake it. The methods for achieving this have become both science and art. Uh, in nearly 30 years of special effects history is what you have when you examine Star Trek. From Matt Jeffries, Matt... Meyer, Wa Chang, Linwood Dunn, who worked on the original television version of Star Trek, up through Douglas Thimble, John Dykstra, Sid Mead, Greg Jean, Rick Price, wow, what a name that is, <laughs> Andrew Robert, and the other 300 technicians who worked long house, who worked long house to make Star Trek the motion picture everything it could technically be when it hit theater screens in 79. Though all of them would through all of them, we not only see the importance of special effects to Trek grew between the end of the series in 69 and the release of the motion picture, but also strides to make made in the field itself. What was actually technological, technologically possible changed in that one decade, and motion pictures changed dramatically along with it. And it starts with the 60s here, going into... Let's see... Uh, Okay, well, here's a quote from Matt Jeffries. In the March 1987 issue of Cinefantastique, 
Jeffrey said, I think the first time we had a review, I probably had a hundred different sketches. There were certain elements that we liked and certain elements of others that we liked and kind of sort of tossed the rest aside and began to assemble things with the elements that had some appeal to us. And this was about making the Enterprise. One possible design had a spherical primary hull instead of a saucer-shaped hull. hull. At one point, the design of the Enterprise was viewed as being, an ups as being upside down from what was finally settled on. <laughs> so the nacelles... How would that kind of work? That would just be weird. <laughs> so the nacelles would be underneath, maybe like the Stargazer? I don't know. Do you mind? I'm working here, you sneaky little poo -hain. You know, Floyd will kick you in the butt. Kick you in the butt, kick you in the butt. Phil. I'm sorry, your name's Phil. He's a traitor to the cause. He's actually a Trekkie fan. Don't let Lord Vader know. Anywho. Um, and they go... They mention the, the original series and how... Basically what they had to go through to basically get the show on the screen on a technological aspect. From, you know, the old tricks they used, maybe new stuff they came up with, up until the movie. And again, the photo gallery. It's a close-up of the Romulan ship from Balance of Terror. And it's actually kind of rather impressive when you look at it close-up. I mean, these are beautiful models. And a side note. And I don't know if I put that up yet or not, but we got to go to Washington, D.C. for our honeymoon. And we got to go to the Smithsonian. The... the... Well, the whole shebang, basically. And the part with the spaceships and stuff, the science museum, first thing I wanted to see was the model of the Enterprise. It was supposed to be hanging next to the spirit of St. Louis. Maybe it's on another five-year mission, because I didn't see it. I wanted to see this thing. There was the spirit of St. Louis. Where the hell was the Enterprise? I did not see it hanging anywhere. And I'm still rather pissed off about that. I wanted to see that ship, damn it. It was rather kind of sparse. I'm like, it's a Smithsonian. Where the hell is everything? <laughs> anyway. But this is it. The, um, the Klingon ships for the Enterprise incident. Only one model was built as the other two in the scene were added optically. Um, and it goes into, like I said, the motion picture. Um, into the search for Spock. Oh, it goes all the way up to... Actually, I think it goes up to... Well, it says Final Frontier. That would be... Now, this is something I don't understand. It goes, question, how many ears does Mr. Spock have? A, three, left ear, right ear, and a final front ear. Uh, no, it does go up to Undiscovered Country. I thought it did. And then it goes into sort of the start of, you know, next gen, where you have, it's a lot more computer, computer based as far as the graphics, because of course, by that time, computers have kind of reached the technological meat that you could pull that off on kind of a weekly basis. You know, where in, you know, the original series, which is why I like the unscrewed around with version of Star Wars. It, it was 90% all practical effects other than maybe cell animation or something like that. Everything was kind of, I mean, not knocking the people that do, you know, computer animation. It, in that in itself is a lot of work, I mean, you know. But I like the stuff you have in your hands. Of course, I'm a hand crafter, so I kind of appreciate more of the hands-on physical touchy-feely type of stuff to see an actual model of the ship compared to like a cinematic, you know, CG thing. Now, I don't know. I mean, I know they had the model. I think she was like six feet long. I mean, she was a good sized model for next gen. And then they like matted it into other things. Maybe did the same thing with Voyager and Maybe DS9, I'm not sure. I don't know if anybody could tell me. Is at any point was the ships or a ship in Star Trek totally CG? Or has it always been based on an actual physical model? Hmm. This of course doesn't tell you. Because it's pre that type of era. 
But anybody who's actually into filming stuff, too, like a film school student, somebody who's into special effects and practical effects, whether you like Star Trek or not, would definitely appreciate this book. Between, you know, especially if you maybe do, doing, like, sci-fi effects, too. You know, you'd probably learn a few things, too. You know, what you would probably end up facing, and, you know, just, on a, just as a technical manual, this is a really good book to have. But it's neat, too, if you appreciate the backdoor stuff of Star Trek. You know, how it was made, not just the actual meat itself. Yes, I know I try to go off. You don't have to yawn. <laughs> Let me fake it, then. <laughs> the only time I talk a lot is when I'm not talking to anybody. Well, technically I'm talking to you, but sort of not. Anyway, good book. Special Effects of Star Trek. In a way, it's kind of a primitive book. I don't know. Just no... Really, I think I'll just sedate them. I don't know. There's nothing really deep as far as, you know, the actual tools they use or anything like that. But more of an overview. But it's still, still, you get stuff out of it. And it's just interesting. And again, you could probably find this used on Amazon a lot cheaper than even the 10 bucks now. I don't know. So this is probably the only place you're going to find them is like Amazon or used book um, sites. I don't even know if, I don't know, maybe Barnes and Noble. Some, well, I suppose so if you can download no Nook books. I don't know. <laughs> The other versions of the Kimball, the fancy electronic thing. So, they, I probably, they probably deal, they, they exist. Go buy. Have to look for them. <laughs> I got them when bookstores still exist. It, I don't know. Either way, <laughs> thank you for watching. Um, comment, rate, subscribe. Tell me to go eat. I don't know. Phil says, enjoy Star Trek. Ignore the movies. Uh. You know, if it wasn't for Star Trek, you might not have had a movie. <laughs> I don't know if there was any influence there. Well, no, it would only been, what, 10 years? 69 it ended... Maybe not even a decade between them, because I was born in 76. I was exactly a year and a day when Star Wars came out. So, I kind of missed the original Trek. Thank God for syndication. So, Phil says, comment, rate, subscribe, and maybe he'll help me out in the real... <laughs> kind of a kind of a conundrum. What's the debate going to be? Hmm. Star Wars, Star Trek. Star Wars, Star Trek. No debate. Two separate things. <laughs> Phil says two separate things. Oh well. He says live long and prosper, but his hand doesn't work that way. <laughs> Bye.